Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your Cardboard Concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Today the question I'm answering is what's in the box? In regards to this, this is a copy of Founders of Teotihuacan, a tile-laying game that is a follow-up to the very popular tea game, Teotihuacan. Note this is a standalone game, not an expansion, that is supposed to be a faster-playing, smaller footprint game that gives the same feel as Teotihuacan. I have not opened this before. This is a pre-release copy that I was sent from Boards and Dice, so thank you for that, Boards and Dice. And just a fine note that there may be some slight component changes. For example, I know this pre-production copy was missing some of the wooden cubes, which thankfully Boards and Dice did send me. So I can show these off as if they were in the box, but they weren't technically in my box. If you do happen to note any box damage on this, that's totally my fault. I backed my chair into the box while getting ready for this video. So now we're gonna take a look at Founders of Teotihuacan. This, uh, where are we looking at? One to four players, so you can play solo uh, about an hour per game time. It says ages 14 and up, but I think that's mainly because there's little cubes. This does have a weight rating already of three on Board Game Geek, though, of course, that's subject to change. So I think it's got some of the weight of Teotihuacan, even though it's supposedly a simpler, quicker game. So let's take a look at what's in the box. So here you have my copy. Again, these were sent separately. This was because this is an advanced copy of the game. The advanced copy, there was a small issue where the cubes were not included. So we will, you don't have to worry about that if you're buying the game. Oh, I do see there's some in here. So maybe I have additional. They're slightly different color, but again, I'm not gonna worry about that. That's only because I have a pre-production copy of the game. So we have lots of wooden bits. We may as well start off with those. These are the cubes that were in the box. They're your simple standard wooden cubes in three different colors, which I think you can see them there. Standard board game wooden cubes, kind of component you expect to see in board games. There is quite a few of them. You do have the desiccant package in here, which most places you can throw out. If you do live somewhere with high humidity, you may want to keep this with your copy of the game. I am personally don't have that problem, so we'll be tossing that out. Then we have the discs you're going to use to take your actions. This is an action selection game where you have different temples to go to, and there's a bidding mechanic where the more discs you use, the more powerful the action is, but once you are so many discs on an action, you can't take it anymore. So these are in the four player colors, which from my understanding are colorblind friendly. So that's a nice bonus. And here we have the discs that you'll be using. These are wooden. I like how much the colors do stand out against each other. So we're gonna put those back in a baggie. Again, I just tossed out the desiccant package. The silica gel, don't eat it. Then we have some big meeples. They're really chunky meeples. I kind of wish I had a standard meeple so you could compare the size here. Um, well, you got to see the standard size cubes again. Goodbye. Silicon pack. Chunky meeples. Nice big chunky meeples in the standard meeple shape. Now, again, I do have a set of additional cubes that were sent by the publisher. I'll find out exactly why. I don't know if there aren't enough of the cubes or maybe they thought they might be missing and they weren't. Again, as someone buying the retail copy, you probably won't have to worry about that. Then we have a standard eight-sided die, a D8. Doesn't seem to be anything special about this die at all. Looks like a standard black eight-sided die. Yeah, no, no special numbers, eight-sided die. I play a lot of role-playing games, so I'm familiar with the size die. Here's your long sword damage die. I'm not gonna bother keeping the baggie for that. It's not gonna get damaged. Then we have the rule book. Oh, we have tiny discs. Um, I, Guessing for following score tracks or something like that, I don't know off the top of my head where these ones are for. Uh, again, I haven't actually played this game. I did do some research to find out what I'd be expecting when I open this, so I do know what some of the stuff's for. These obviously aren't your worker placement pieces, but these are smaller discs. Uh, again, in the same colors. I'm not going to bother taking them with a bag, but so you can kind of compare the two sizes here. Little tiny discs. Then we have a rule book and a solo mode in a sev separate book. Uh, your solo mode, of course, comes from Daniel Zerke. Um, and he did work with someone else this time around. The solo mode, I don't see it here. It's probably in the instructions somewhere. So we have a solo mode. We're just gonna quickly flip through. Probably mostly dry to give you stuff. A lot of tables. Solo rules, how to win, credits. So does it say solo mode was, was David Zerke and Blazev Kubayek? 
or Kubaki, sorry. I apologize for the, the pronunciation of these Polish names. Uh, then we have the core rulebook, which I gotta say, that, that's a meaty tome. For a lighter version of a game, this doesn't look light. Uh, nice, thankfully, there is a living rule book. Living rules pledge, I like that. We pledge to support every game well after its initial release. And here is a QR code to scan, showing all the components, which we'll be going through quickly once I get through the book. I'll flip through this quick. Um, I see lots of examples. Structure plays separately. This is what I was talking about, about putting your discs on to take actions and how, how it's legal or not. Um, the board is broken into four quadrants. Every turn, you're only going to use two of those. So this is showing how that rotates. Uh, there's lots of polyominoes. So once we get going, we'll see lots of polyominoes. Looks like just as many examples as there are rules, which is fantastic to see. Um, you are also building a temple in the middle of the board. That is something very similar to Teotihuacan, the full version. Uh, final scoring and appendices, talking about the different round discs, the pyramid rewards, symbols, and the polyomino shapes. And awesome, a nice appendix of what all the tile powers are. I always like seeing something like that. Next, we get into the other oh, punch boards. That's interesting. So it's one of those boards that are puzzle fit. So you're gonna build a puzzle fit main board to hold all of your different pieces, which these are literally falling out as I'm picking them up out of the box. So we have a puzzle fit central board where you'll be drafting stuff and taking your actions. These are your three different action spots. And that's where those discs are gonna go. And then there's also an income phase you can activate. This is single-sided with some artwork on the back. Then we have individual player boards. These are where players will be building their stuff. It almost seems silly to have these punch out because they like go so close to the edge. So we have individual player boards. So far, these are all symmetrical, but I think if I flip them, they'll be an asymmetric side. That's... Are there two different sides? No, they might be symmetrical. No, there are differences in the middle. So where things are laid out in the middle are different. But where these symbols are appear to be the same. So four player boards for the four player counts. Here you have your tiles for building up your pyramid. Um, unfortunately, they're not nice, thick, Bakelite tiles like the uh, domino-like tiles included in Tale to, to Walk In. We're just looking at cardboard tiles. Then we have more. These are the, for the center of your pyramid. Some of the polyominoes, various different action spots. Cardboards, pretty average thickness. Maybe a little less than average thickness. It's not thick card, but it's not thin either. I'm going to flip through these quickly. Your favor with the god tokens. Another aspect that carries over. These are the round discs that they explained in the rule book there. And that's it. A whole bunch of cardboard to punch. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Polyominoes. It's a non-Uwe Rosenberg polyomino game. I'm looking forward to it as a big fan of Teotihuacan. I'm really looking forward to checking this out because while I like the original, it is a meaty beast that takes up a lot of room, so it isn't always easy to get to the table. This should be more approachable, but still keeping the joy and weight. Looks like the kind of game my wife and I should really enjoy. There's a small chance we'll even get it played this weekend. Everything fits back in the box nice. Um, I am probably going to use baggies. I will note there were no baggies included, but again, this is a pre-release copy, so there's a chance the final will come with some kind of organization system. There you have it, founders of Teotihuacan, tile playing game. There you have what you get in the box for founders of Teotihuacan, a tile laying game a follow-up to the very popular boards and dice game, Teotihuacan, part of the key series of games with lots of other games with names that are hard to pronounce, but fantastic gameplay. Reminder, this is a standalone game. This is not an expansion for Teotihuacan. It is a standalone game for one to four players, all about building up your own areas in four different quadrants and building up your pyramid. Lots of polyominoes, action selection with a slight auction mechanic. Looks fantastic. I can't wait to get to this to the table. To find out what I did think about this game, be sure to watch tabletopbellhop.com. That's our main webpage. Or follow us on YouTube at tabletopbellhop, or sorry, youtube.com slash tabletopbellhop, uh, where I'll be sharing my thoughts about this game. You'll also see me posting all over social media when we get some gameplays in, including pictures on Instagram. Uh, maybe I'll put up a Pinterest pin. We'll probably paste, post it on Facebook. I'm sure I'll be tweeting stuff. You can find me on all those sites at tabletopbellhop, one word. 
Well, that's it for this unboxing. Thank you very much for joining me. If you played Founders of Teotihuacan, I would love to hear about your experience with this great looking game in the comments below. Thank you and game on.